so the question is, who trained me and or who has influenced me? Um, so to kind of start with the obvious, uh, my instructor, Gino Santana, um, obviously has taught me an enormous amount, both on the mats and off the mats. Um, other jiu-jitsu athletes um, and instructors, whether it's Marcelo Garcia, uh, the Mendez brothers, um, the specific uh, mentors that I had uh, as I was coming up, the other students that I trained with and taught as a, uh, helping me reflect my own techniques and thoughts back to me and seeing what worked and seeing what didn't. Um, those things I think are fairly uh, obvious. Um, perhaps there's a little bit of, a, of a clarification that can be done about why does Marcelo Garcia do something one way and Rafael Mendez does it another way. Uh, and we call it the exact same technique. They seem to solve the problems uh, very effectively. Um, but why would I do this one versus that one? Um, we'll dig into that in another video. Um, but on the maybe less obvious side, uh, individuals like Kelly Starrett, who uh, is known for uh, becoming a self leopard uh, and generally um, conveying the importance of mobility as for creating a baseline for athleticism. Um, Chris Summers, a gymnastics coach, um, and the, all of the sports that are individual tests of human, uh, human athleticism, whether it's the Olympic rings or track and field or anything along those lines, what it's essentially doing is it's testing very specific mechanics that humans use. Now, jiu-jitsu is testing very specific mechanics that humans use while someone's trying to stop you from doing that. So it ends up being this system of athletes. These two athletes are trying to create very strong mechanics for themselves. And because of their grappling, if they create strong mechanics for themselves, they break down their opponent's mechanics. So uh, unlike striking where we could possibly both be in a great position to throw a strike at any given moment, in grappling, it is impossible for both of us to be in a great position at the same time. So one thing that's really useful is if you start looking into uh, seemingly divergent areas like gymnastics and understanding what a stable shoulder looks like, what a pelvic tilt is and how to correct it, if you start addressing that and then go back and do your drills, do your guard passes, all that stuff, you'll find yourself much, much more effective simply because you are putting yourself in a stronger position, it will make your opponent in a much more compromised position. And in terms of strategy and pruning down the number of things you could focus on. If you just focus on making yourself strong, not falling over, creating the strongest shape you possibly can, you don't necessarily have to worry about what your partner is doing because they're not going to be able to do anything. If you're in a strong position, your partner's in a weak position. And I think that is something that is uh, most clearly uh, understood and learned from instructors and books and uh, resources outside of jiu-jitsu, uh, simply because of the resources inside of jiu-jitsu tend to focus on the specific nuances of techniques um, and sometimes lose sight of the bigger picture of how does the human skeleton move through time and space and how can we optimize that. If you want more videos, please click below to subscribe. If you want to dive in deeper, you can click here to get a free video seminar I did of one of my favorite sequences uh, from standing to submission. And if you have any questions or anything you want to see, please leave it in the comments below.